<laughs> the guitar fish bite in Southern California was brisk this morning. Lots of guitar fish. These creatures have been on the face of the earth for literally millions of years. Not exactly the sought after species, but still a lot of fun with my friend Bob Gibbard. Good times in the surf. Right kind. Straight off of work, straight to fishing. Gotta love Aaron rushing, representing Friedman Adventures at last night's grand opening for the Bass Pro Shops in Irvine, California, along with Andrew Deal. That is one nice yellowtail for my dear friend, Pancho El Pescador, fishing San Bruno. But check this out. He caught that fish by casting a lure off the rocks. There is something really special about catching a yellow like that. San Bruno, Baja California, Sur, where Pancho El Pescador made it happen on the iron while fishing from the rocks. Nice going, my friend. Hop on board with Louis Prieto, and it's for real sport fishing as he made the trip down to the Bay of Los Angeles. Bahia de Los Angeles, about a 400-mile drive down the Baja Peninsula where they they had copious amounts of yellowtail, some nice cabrilla fishing, and that dog going crazy over the yellows down there. Absolutely perfect weather, great fishing, nice going, Louie. Hey, good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to beautiful Surfside, California, this lovely Holy Thursday morning. It is absolutely beautiful, and I see a lot of life here on the beach. Not only are there some surf fishermen walking up and down the beach early here this morning, but birds everywhere, those white turns that make that sound that just beckons you to the beach because you know they're on fish, and also lots of pelicans. Grunion runs again tonight for the fourth night and final night of this particular run. And of course, last night, Bass Pro in Irvine opened up. Wow, there was a lot of great people there, big crowds. And also, we've got the tribute going for Bluefin today, the Pursuit at 11 Halibut. There is so much going on, and this season hasn't even started. You know what time it is. It's time for the morning briefing. Good morning, my friends. Mm. Not as cold this morning, really lovely, no wind, it is gorgeous. Take a look at that ocean, she is absolutely beautiful. There's going to be some fishing accomplished here today and maybe even some catching if we're lucky. Hey, hit that like button, we deeply appreciate it when you're able to do that. Of course, share these videos and subscribe to the Freedman Adventures YouTube channel. Tick that little bell, you'll be notified when there is new content. You can also follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Spotify and Apple Podcast. Every single day we'll bring you all the very, very latest. Getting really excited for our five-day trip on board the Independence. We leave on Thursday, a week from today, and then we're going to have five days at that Bluefin Yellowtail Rockfish. Who knows what else? It should be a marvelous trip. And I want to remind you all that I'll be doing daily updates, the morning briefing live from the Independence, and also I will be funneling in lots of shorts, keeping you apprised of exactly what we are doing and giving you the broader picture. Live from the Independence out of Point Loma Sword Fishing on the Freedman Adventures five-day trip, April 4th through the 9th, I'll be bringing you, whoa, some live updates from there. All right, we've got so much to get it over to you here this morning. In fact, on the lead-in, we covered a bunch of great stuff and had so much fun bringing that to you. I mean, whether it was Poncho down there in San Bruno catching that yellow off the rocks, or it was Robert Graber playing the guitar fish. I love that opening, Robert. Good job there. There is just so much going on. Let's start in Mexico, and we'll start you out down in San Quentin, 140 miles down below the border, where we have seen some really outstanding yo-yo eye or yellowtail fishing. It has been really great down there. Sometimes it's 10 to 12 pound fish. Sometimes it's that 15 to 25 pound grade. And you also have the lingcod and the reds and so much more. So really great fishing there. Now we get you to Ensenada, which is only 70 miles below the border. And some of that yellowtail now seems to have pushed up 
closer to Todo Santos Island. We've seen some scores down there on the Big Bonita and some more yellowtail, which have moved up from the Santo Tomas area. They're still down there at Santo Tomas, 85 miles below the border. Also at Colinette, 120 miles below the border. But some of that stuff now up there around Ensenada. And one of our great sources down there, Foca, he'll be out tomorrow checking that out but we'll have more guys and more intel coming in today to see if it pushes up there because it's that progression up the Baja Peninsula that ultimately leads that fish in to SoCal and all our local islands as I hope that gentleman who just went by surf fishing has some good luck you know Clemente, Catalina Island even up there into Santa Barbara Island and above we get that flow of Forky moving up the coast, so that is all really, really good. We'll be continuing to watch that progression as it moves up. Also, we had a little report there from our friend Louis Prieto. It's for real sport fishing. He operates out of Ensenada, but he took the family down to the Bay of L.A. And in the Bahia de Los Angeles, they had great yellowtail fishing, lots of cabrilla. It was great to see Louis doing his thing down there in that neck of the woods. Royal Polaris has been on a dream. Excellent long range trip. They are headed north now, starting to head back to San Diego. And hopefully they're going to have some intel for our independence trip if they see any yellowfin tuna anywhere within range for us. We're going to be watching the Royal Polaris come back because they finished up with outstanding wahoo fishing and lots of yellowfin tuna. They also had a chance to catch some bottom dwellers, reef fish that are really exciting to catch because you don't see them every single day. So great long range fishing. And now we're going to get to the bluefin tuna. But first, don't forget it's tax season. You need a man on your team who you can trust, and that is Tim Marquez at A Best Income Tax. Give Tim a call today and relieve your tax burden as soon or sooner than you could possibly imagine. Tim Marquez is that man. All right, let's get into this bluefin tuna situation. Tribute is going tonight on a day and a half trip. They've got a weather window, as you know, and I might as well mention it right now. We're going to have a lot of wet weather this weekend. Looks like it's going to be really rainy and kind of be unstable Saturday, Sunday, right into Monday. Maybe that's the Lord above saying, hey, you guys, I know you like to fish, but spend Easter with the family this year. So anyway, we're going to get some inclement weather. But right now we've got this weather window and the tribute's going to go check it out. And it should be very, very interesting to see what he can get accomplished. Recently, we haven't had much bluefin tuna action at all. And it's all been because of the weather. We've had this windy weather and now we're going to have some rain along with it. Incidentally, there doesn't seem to be much wind with the rain. So if you don't mind getting wet, you can still get out on a trip and catch some fish this weekend. Back to the bluefin tuna. Haven't caught that much because of the windy weather. Now we get a little window. It'll be interesting to see if they can come up with a catch. Because previous to all that wind and rain and everything else that we've been experiencing, we saw really some outstanding bluefin tuna fishing. I mean really good. Big fish too. Pacific Dawn, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, just to name a few guys, Condor. All have had a piece of that big fish. I mean 90 to 180 pound Bluefin tuna, gorgeous fish. There's been a fair amount of also that 40 to 60 pound. It's been a daytime bite, so you catch them in the daytime, sometimes on the kite, many times on a fly line bait with 30 pound fluorocarbon, and other times with a sinker rig that also has been very effective. But we see the majority of our big catches at night on the knife jigs, on the flat fall jigs, that kind of a rig. With the heavy setups, you know, 130-pound specter, 200-pound leaders, and that's when those big fish come out to play and have been biting really well. The 400-plus gram lures have probably been best. There's been times when those two to 300-gram lures work. In the daytime, you also will catch some fish on the 120-gram uh, type lures. So the lures have been really effective. Nighttime's been the right time. Dropping when the captain tells you to drop is essential to your success, and dropping to the exact depth he tells you to drop. You want to drop exactly where those fish are so you're not wasting any time. And you're working that fish zone always. You're never coming up too high in the water column and you're never going too deep. You're hammering on where the fish are. And it just ups your chances of landing one of these big, beautiful trophy fish. So tribute, we got our fingers crossed. We'll be watching that trip 
very, very closely for you all to see how they do. Heating and air conditioning needs nobody better than John Lopez. Make sure you give John a call today and he will take great care of you. All right, let's talk about the Southern California areas. Our surf fishing guy is, uh, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's throwing a bait. Uh, the Southern California area, let's first of all focus on halibut pursuit at Catalina Island out of 22nd Street Landing. I just mentioned how gorgeous she looks right now. And they run daily over to Catalina. I had 11 halibut yesterday. And man, I'm, I'm just going to refuse to get used to that being kind of an ordinary number. That is great halibut fishing. I had 11 halibut. And then they just kind of picked at the bass and sheephead and other species. Nothing wide open there. But that shot at the halibut, really excellent for the pursuit yesterday at a 22nd Street. They run daily out of there and uh, usually come up with some good scores. Been a little bit windy, but it looks like a beautiful day today. Man, the crossing ought to be gorgeous on the pursuit, so we'll keep our eyes on them. Native Sun continues and will finish up their great halibut derby this year. For sure, they have been the epicenter of halibut fishing this year. They have had the best year by far of any boat tremendous halibut fishing for those guys and then the pride we're watching them closely they always come up with some really good scores their best score of the year was 16 guys and 80 halibut that is really fantastic so halibut still spread around by the way daniel hottaway will be joining us at the end of the morning briefing if you didn't see him live last night i've tagged it on to the morning briefing for you and he has some halibut tips for you he talks about the channel islands white sea bass and so much more don't go anywhere at the end of today's report because daniel is a great guy great captain he's got some info on how you can save 20 percent on his trips and i will be on board the island spirit on monday that's right for the rockfish opener shooting a video so i hope to see you there i'll be there at ventura sport fishing that is going to be a lot of fun so some pretty good halibut fishing going on now other guys up and down the coast continue to fish calico bass, sand bass. You know, there's some whitefish and sculpin, occasional halibut kicked in there. Sheephead has been really, really good at times. Down in San Diego, we've seen some of that mixed with some okay halibut fishing at times. Dana Wharf sport fishing, we saw the water temperatures in the mid 50s after all that wind and then it popped up to 60 degrees and we started catching a few more calico bass there then coming up here to the long beach and san pedro areas up there to marina del rey redondo up in that neck of the woods and spread throughout here we see some good sheephead fishing white fish that kind of stuff as everybody is awaiting monday and the rockfish opener that is going to be absolutely fantastic victory long beach sport fishing great day on the sheephead they had a lot of fun out there with sheephead and sculpin biting very very well so that is great stuff and hopefully that will continue but of course everybody is excited about the rockfish opener and once we get that rain starting to fall on our head saturday and sunday it'll be good family time for you spend easter sunday with your family and then get right into the rockfish opener the very next day that's exciting stuff i can't wait to see what we catch there on the island spirit on monday don't forget the danny Cadota show live tonight at 5 p.m you're not gonna want to miss it danny's gonna have another great show for you i'll be there with him and it should be a lot of fun as always and as always you'll be able to ask any question your little heart desires that is for sure taking a look at the surf you gotta love anthony noy this guy man he's becoming my hero one night he's out grunion hunting collecting bait so that he has some really great bait to fish the southern california surf with then he goes to work he gets off work and immediately goes to the beach and nails that nice flat fish. What a beautiful catch. Anthony, way to go, man. And he said he dumped a really big one right after that. So, wow, there's some nice halibut fishing. It shouldn't be a mystery at all, as we've been telling you, that when the grunion move in here tonight is the final night. It'll be a late one, like midnight, if you want to see the little grunion tonight. 
But when they move in on the beach, of course, it's all part of the food chain and the predators are not far behind. Yesterday, Bob Gifford and I had some fun surf fishing down here and we saw a lot of those shovel nose sharks, guitar fish all over the place. We haven't seen them all year long. And I surmise from that that they're in there feeding on the ground. And don't forget Big Fish Bait and Tackle in the beautiful city of Seal Beach, California. They've not only got all your bait needs, but they've got your tackle from surf fishing to trout fishing to big game bluefin tuna fishing. Big Fish Bait and Tackle in Seal Beach on the corner of Pacific Coast Highway and Seal Beach Boulevard has it all for you. Go pick up your ruler down there. They have a ruler and they are giving away a free custom rod every single month. This month, March, is about to end. It will be for the largest barred perch. You take the ruler you buy there, you lay it in the sand, you put your catch down, you inscribe the date in the sand, take a photo and upload it to the Instagram account of Big Fish Bait and Tackle, and you're in. No cost at all. Just make sure you have that ruler so everybody has the same ruler, and it should be great. And what a beautiful custom rod. Every month for the rest of the year, maybe December not, I'm not sure about that, but just about every single month. For the next six months, for sure, you're going to be eligible to win a free custom rod, courtesy of Big Fish Bait and Tackle. That's going to be absolutely fantastico. All right, I love what's going on down there around Todos Santos Islands. Yellow's starting to push up. Folk will be on it tomorrow. We'll be watching him very, very closely. And then we see some of that yellow tail around La Jolla, the new Seaforth, and some of those boats down there. Not getting them every single day, but every once in a while, that forky will pop up and they'll yo-yo iron that fish. Bring your 60-pound and a small, heavy jig to yo-yo with if you're on the new Seaforth, out of Seaforth Sport Fishing. And other guys like the Mission Bell and several other guys are also tuned into that. By the way, Mission Bell, Coronado Islands in April, that's where he will be headed. So we'll be watching that for you very, very closely also. All right, what a gorgeous morning. It is absolutely beautiful. We are so blessed here in SoCal. As I know, so many of you are around the world and around the United States who tune into the morning briefing and all of our shows. Man, I know we are all very, very blessed and it is great to stand here in front of you. Don't go anywhere. Daniel, how do we coming up next? Halibut tips, Channel Island summary, 20% off, kids fish free. We'll cover all of that as we did last night in that live interview. That will be up next. All right, take care my friends. Always good to spend time with you and I hope to see you really, really soon. So happy to go up north there to the island spirit out of Ventura Sport Fishing. Daniel Hadaway is standing by the captain of the island spirit. Daniel, it's great to see you. Great to see you, Phil. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I got a little surf fishing session in, and <laughs> while all I caught was a bunch of guitar fish, I had a good time. It was a beautiful day. And, you know, I mean, even though it's not the sought after Corbina or Spot Fink Broker or whatever, it's still fun. Yeah. Fishing's always a good time. Absolutely. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something about that, and then we'll get into the, the whole thing. But I was talking to my mm -hmm. son, Patrick, who had a really rough day at work yesterday. And when yeah. I talked to him, it sounded like a real, like he was a little stressed out. So I called him mm -hmm. back an hour later just to check on him. And I go, yeah, are you OK? And he goes, yeah, hey, I went out back, hit the pond. I caught a couple of big bass. I'm good now, man. I'm I'm just <laughs> fine. So yeah. it just it proves exactly what you're saying. All right. So. Uh, I feel like we got a lot to talk about. I mean, we only have a little bit more time left for people to save 20% on yep. all islands spirit in California. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this weekend, what you have in plan. And then, of course, the rockfish opener looms huge. But why don't we start with saving people 20%? What's that all about? Yeah, so um, just a few days left for the special, guys. If you want to come out fishing with us, give the landing a call at 805-676-3474 or visit us on VenturaSportFishing.com and uh, either typing in the code PRESEASON20 or mentioning it on the phone, you'll get 20% off on your fishing trips aboard the Island Spirit and Californian. So just a few more days left for this uh, special, so I'd, I'd get on it before it's gone. 
All right, and then another special that you don't have to get on right away, but that is Sunday's <laughs> Kids Fish Free on the Island Spirit. Is that throughout the year? Yeah, it will be every Sunday throughout the year. So uh, obviously this Sunday we're going to do the kids trip, but um, same thing. Fused, uh, I think the, the code is uh, kids F free. It's kids F F R E E online. Or you can just uh, call the landing and mention that um, you want to take advantage of the kids fish free uh, special. It's a free child's ticket ages 12 and under with the purchase of an adult fare. So uh, we'll be doing that all season long. We do have a trip up for this Sunday. If you guys would like to bring the kids out fishing, take advantage of that deal. Uh, same thing. Get in contact with us and book a trip. All right. Good stuff. If anybody out there has a question, you can ask Daniel. I'll be asking him all kinds of questions because I'm always interested <laughs> in the very latest. One more thing. And uh, that is that the Rockfish opener is on Monday. It looks like beautiful weather. And you're truly, yeah. I'll be up there. I can't wait. I'm going to come up and shoot a video. I might even bring like a real professional camera guy with me so oh, I can even fish nice. a little bit. That would be there a novel go. experience for me. But uh, why don't you talk about the Rockfish opener for a second? It's going to be big time. Yeah, the Rockfish opener is a day that we uh, certainly spend all off season looking forward to. And it's uh, right around the corner here. So, um, yeah, we can finally keep rockfish. We don't have to throw a bunch of uh, tasty critters back anymore as we're, uh, you know, fishing throughout the day. Um, that Just because rockfish is open doesn't mean we're going to exclusively fish for rockfish, but it's definitely going to be a part of our day. Uh, I still like to go poke around and try to catch a game fish, maybe a sea bass or halibut at some point in the day, but we definitely will spend some time uh, prior to that rock fishing in the morning. So um, the tackle does change a little bit. Um, you're going to want to bring probably like 12 and 16 ounce sinkers along with your lighter stuff, just just in case we, uh, you know, want to dip down in the 300 foot depth or so to try to catch some nicer quality fish. Um, uh, hooks change a little bit too. You could you could fish the like mid size circle hooks. Works really well for. A lot of guys rock fishing just in case, uh, you know, you're real deep and it's hard to feel the bite a lot of the times if you don't have spectra. So the, the circle hook helps a lot. So I'd say if you're coming fishing on the opener, bring some, um, bring torpedo sinkers anywhere from, you know, four, five, six ounces all the way up to 16 ounces. So we can kind of have you covered with all the different fishing we'll be doing throughout the day. And then uh, you're going to want your small... Um, you're going to want larger circle hooks for rock fishing. Um, and that should, that should cover it. All right. All right. Well, I don't, I don't know why we can't see you right now, Dan. You may want to re-add or something, but we can uh, hear you still. So that's the important thing. Can you hear me, Daniel? You got me still? All right. Daniel's going to be right back. So one more time. Um, Rockfish opener is on Monday, and I will be on board. The Island Spirit, really looking forward to that. Daniel should rejoin us in a moment. If you'd like to order one of these hats that you see here or a shirt, go to embroiderycreations.net, and you can do that. I think Daniel is about to join us again, so you don't have to look at me the whole time. Here he is. There he is. You're back, magically. <laughs> Yep. Sorry about we that. You. Hey, no problem. So great stuff. Uh, do you fish any deeper than 300 feet ever? Yeah, we could. Uh, we could fish as deep as we want, really. But um, there's some pretty good local rock fishing um, spots that are right around 300 feet. So we'll uh, we'll see if that works out. It's possible that we could fish deeper, but uh, that's the depth I'd, I'd like to fish at. You know, All so right. That sounds good to me. I'm going to read you a couple of uh, questions here, comments. Sure. Tony says, good afternoon, guys. Thank you for taking the time for, to uh, get this uh, info to us on these videos. And, Tony, I know I speak for Daniel. When we thank you for joining us, taking time out of your busy day. He wants yeah, to know, is it, is it true that you can only keep two reds now? Yeah, unfortunately, that is uh, what we're dealing with this year. So they cut the rockfish limit or the red rockfish limit in half again. So. Now it's only two reds and eight other miscellaneous rockfish. So, yeah, only only two reds this year. But uh, we're going to have to 
spend some time trying to find some uh, other good stuff to take home, some canaries, bankies, boscos. There's other good stuff we can catch, but it uh, it is unfortunate that we can only have two reds now. I know, but the, the, like you say, the variety of rockfish in California is really extraordinary. There's so many yeah. different kinds, and filling up a limit of fish is still not going to be a big chore. It should be just fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be okay. Oh. All right, very good. David Rosenthal says, good afternoon. And he asks, what conditions are you looking for when you're searching for the elusive halibut? Well, you want to look at the water. You want to have, um, you know, good looking water. You want to see some bait on the electronics. That that helps a lot sometimes. Just there being uh, some bait around for these halibut to be eating, obviously. Um, and then you, you need to move a little bit. You know, when you're uh, fishing for halibut, you don't just mark them on the bottom. You don't just see like halibut fish marks on the bottom. Right? There's no such thing. They kind of camouflage themselves to the bottom and then live in like the, the sand or the mud there. So um, you're really just trying to move. You're trying to have good movement and uh, cover a lot of ground. So you want to be, uh, you know, you want to be drifting at a speed of around a knot or so, I'd say. So you want to have a little bit of drift and, and be able to cover a good amount of ground there and you know, try to find a patch of biting fish and, you know, kind of figure out where you're getting bit at and just, just keep uh, keep drifting over that little zone. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. If you start to get consistent bites, I mean, it's like anything else, right? I mean, you're yeah. jigging around for albacore, you start catching some albacore, you start turning a circle, you're walking on the beach trying to catch surface, you get bit, you stop, and fish yeah. there. Same thing with halibut. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if we get a bite, I'll... You know, if I'm on deck, I'll run up and look at my electronics to kind of take note of where the where the bite happened. And, you know, obviously, if we're getting bites in the same like area, we'll, we'll just keep uh, try to key in on where that that fish is and get set up on top of it again. You know, I'm really I mean, I'm probably one of my favorite kind of fishing is rockfish. At the mm -hmm. same time, I'm really thrilled to hear that you're not exclusively going to fish rockfish. You're going to give the halibut sea bass and other game yeah. fish, maybe even a yellowtail, a shot. Maybe. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we always want to give everyone a shot at catching a, you know, trophy once-in-a-lifetime fish whenever they come out. Rockfish is cool and fun and all, and we're uh, very happy to be able to fish for them again. But it's, it's just not going to be the end-all, be-all only only species we're going to fish for just because it's open. But we will, for those wanting to fish rockfish, we will spend plenty of time, like the majority of the day doing it. But I'm just trying to let you guys know we will set aside a little bit of time to catch an exotic. Well, in a perfect world, man, we limit out on rockfish and then we go searching <laughs> for the, the game fish, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. Anthony, go ahead. Uh, Anthony, it is so good to see you here, my friend. And he says he can't wait. He'll be on the Native Sun in two weeks. Uh, he can't thank you guys enough for the info. He soaks all this knowledge up. And, man, that's the kind of guy I like because a guy that's open to learning is a guy that will be successful in fishing. Oh, yeah. And that's why, you know, Daniel, I tell people, you know, they'll ask me for advice about fishing, and I'll give them the advice, but I always end up saying, talk to a crew member. They're out there yeah. every day. You're talking to a guy in a podcast studio. And while I get this <laughs> info from the guys all the time, mm -hmm. and I trust my sources, there's nothing better than talking to a guy who's been on the water the last two weeks in a row and has seen it all unfold. He knows exactly what to tell you to do. Yeah, 100%. You know, uh, the guys on the crew are very friendly at least i'm speaking for my boat everyone's very friendly very knowledgeable about what we're doing and we want the best for you we want you guys to catch as much fish as possible and have as good of a time as possible you know there's uh there's nobody else that wants you to succeed more than us because uh you know it directly benefits us when you guys catch a lot of fish and have a good time so we want to we want to keep that going and then anthony you said you're going on the native sun and I'm sure you've seen their uh, fish counts and their halibut derby and all that. They've yeah, they've been crushing it. So, uh, yeah, talk to the crew when you get on there. Obviously, you probably heard some halibut tips from this show, and that's great. But if uh, if you go on there and the crew members are telling you about something else that's working, you know, don't 
don't be afraid to listen to them. Give it a shot. They'll uh, they'll know what's best for you on on that day. Best of luck, Anthony. And we hope we see you up in the Channel Islands out of Ventura on the Island Spirit one day. Also really, really soon. Incidentally, we have a trip with you on May the 31st. That's going to be a lot of fun, too. Yes, Can't sir. wait for that one. Um, Tony wants to know, what is the best moon phase when you are in search of white sea bass? Uh, it seems like before the full moon, the sea bass uh, bite pretty well. So, like, uh, the week leading up to the full moon is usually pretty good. Um, Omar says, grunion run, baby. And we did see a lot of grunion up and down the Southern California beaches last night. I, of course, was snoring away like a little baby because I need my <laughs> beauty rest and there it's not go. working. I think I'm going to have to resort to plastic surgery. But I want to ask you this question because I normally focus on surf fishing when I'm talking about grunion uh, and, and how predators move up on the beach. And we haven't seen those guitar fish that I talked about all year. And I guarantee mm -hmm. you they're here on that grunion. That's why they're here. And, you know, there's probably a bit more. Do you oh, yeah. ever try to correlate a grunion run to sport fishing? Have you ever thought about that or said, Hey, there's a grunion run. It seems like this happens or have you, I've never thought about it to be honest with you. Yeah, honestly, uh, I've never thought about it either, but you, you could be onto something. It's, it's interesting, but yeah, I've, I've never personally really paid attention or thought about it. I'm going to start, I'll start uh, doing my own little thing when you, well, I'll watch you this weekend too. And we'll see yeah. what happens right uh, as we move along. Yeah. All right. Anthony Guerrero says, yes, sir. I talked to the crew guys when I uh, go and uh, he had one that was 21 inches his Ooh. last time, just an inch short. Heartbreak, Anthony. Yep. yep um, that's so, a bummer. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, uh, you were recommending last time that if you have a fish that's like 22 inches, uh, exactly, probably a good idea to toss it. Yeah, it's just, it's not worth it. Uh, when we are measuring our fish and making sure they're legal, we always like to just kind of give it a half inch, you know, leniency. So if it's like maybe barely 22 inches, if I stretch it, like... It's it's not worth it. Just let it live. You don't want to get a ticket. If you want to, you know, keep a fish, measure it out, and make sure it's like a nice 22 and a half inches or so, so you don't have to stress and worry about getting a ticket. It's just it's not worth it. Yeah, no kidding, man. Um, what's the plan for this weekend? What are we doing? We're fishing sheep's head, whitefish, halibut, looking for sea bass. Yeah, Am I yeah on the right for, uh, for Saturday and Sunday, obviously, we can't keep rockfish yet. That opener's on Monday. But, yeah, we'll be spending some time catching, you know, whitefish, sheephead, sculpin, looking around to fill the sacks with some bottom stuff. And then, uh, yeah, fish halibut for a while, try to find a sea bass, whatever, do some scouting, try to um, try to look for a nice, nice area to catch an exotic at. Omar has a great question. He said, if he comes out and brings three setups, what should they be? I like it. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to answer this question for Monday going on for the rest of the season. So starting Monday, we'll be able to fish cod. So you're going to want one like medium setup, I'd say, like medium weight setup. Um, make sure your reel has a lot of space in case we're fishing deep, like a bigger reel. You're going to want a braided line. I recommend having a lot of braided line and then a short like mono top shot. Um, so your first setup should be a medium rod plenty of braided line and a double dropper loop rig with a 16 ounce sinker and a couple circle hooks like uh maybe size 2.0 or 3.0 circle hooks for rockfish i'll be your first setup your second setup can be a bit lighter smaller reel if that's what you'd prefer um but also a double dropper loop but with small j hooks like size 1 or 1.0 j hooks and like an eight or ten ounce sinker. That's for fishing shallow, like white fish, sheephead, that sort of deal. Then uh, you could have a third rod to fish halibut with, um, halibut or sea bass. On that rod, I'd highly, highly recommend having fluorocarbon, some like twenty or twenty-five pound fluorocarbon, and a uh, single, excuse me, single dropper loop setup with a uh, small hook for live bait like a size one J hook and uh, say like a six ounce torpedo sinker on your dropper loop for, uh, for live bait fishing. 
Perfect. That, that settles it right there. Anthony Guerrero says he was fishing on the pier last week. He caught a big old four-foot-long guitar fish, also known, as he points out appropriately, a shovel nose shark. Are you into the there whole slow? Are you into the slow pitch thing? Do you like? Uh, is that cool to come out and slow pitch? Uh, I've seen people doing it, but I, I don't really have an opinion on it. I've I've never personally tried it, or you know, seen it enough really to uh, say yeah, it's great or no, it sucks. I, I I'm really indifferent on it. If you want to try it, go ahead. But if it's not working out, please fish some squid scripts. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like. You feel like fishing with real bait is going to produce better results on a regular basis. I promise it will. Yeah, uh, you can't go wrong with squid strips. There is a, there is nothing when we're fishing deep. There is nothing that won't eat the squid strips. Even if you want that that bigger rockfish or ling cod, they eat the squid strips just as good, if not better, than your your jig will or whatever else you want to fish. But uh, yeah, really important to please fish with bait. It's going to help you and uh, fill your sack up a lot better than trying something, you know, different. Man, this show is becoming popular. The questions are loading <laughs> yeah, in here. A lot of questions. I like it. We thank you all for joining us. Daniel, Daniel and I are, uh, are really want to send our thanks to each and every one of you. I know the answer to this because I'm starting to know Daniel so well, but I'm going to let Daniel <laughs> answer. And he says, do you like the reverse dropper loop for halibut? I think it works. I think it's great, and uh, you can certainly try it, but I prefer the conventional dropper loop. I, I like to fish halibut with the sinker on the bottom and the, the hook up above. I feel like it works better for me, but um, the reverse dropper loop certainly does work, and feel free to try it and switch it up. All right, very good. Omar says, Phil, you are the man. Thank you for all the great content, and thank you to the captain, as well. Thank you, Daniel. You're the man here. Thank you, Omar. Thank thank you uh, guys all for the questions. We appreciate it. Yeah, we do, man. We're nothing without you guys, and we appreciate it very much, Omar. Robert Graber, who will make his debut on the morning briefing tomorrow, playing a guitar fish. Yes, Daniel, I have <laughs> seen the video. It may be banned on YouTube before long, so make sure you <laughs> tune in early tomorrow. I'll check it uh, out. It's pretty uh, bizarre. No, I'm kidding. Robert, <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, sorry to join a bit late. Good afternoon, Phil and Daniel. Thanks for covering the 805. All for you, Robert. Happy hump day to all the Freeman Adventure family members. See you on the island spirit. On April 4th. Woohoo! So awesome. Gonna See be... you then, Robert. I believe that's uh, the Rockfish Rumble, the Western Outdoor News Rockfish Rumble. Oh, right that's on. coming up next week. So uh, we're all excited for that. We'll see you then. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. And uh, do you know Robert? Has he fished with you before? I don't think I've met Robert yet, but it looks like we will be meeting soon. S super Looking great guy. Good. You're, you're going to enjoy fishing with him. No doubt about it. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, Calico Chris. Awesome show. Looking forward to getting on the Island Spirit. Hey, Chris, it was good to see you the other day, my friend, both at our surf fishing event and out there at Bass Pro Shops. That was good. Anthony, you guys have a great evening. My break is over. He had a little break. So <laughs> nice. he was joining us good on evening. his break. Um, so <laughs> this weekend, obviously, we're not fishing rockfish. Have you heard, I, I think you've had a little bit of weather, as everybody has, but any, yeah. rum, any rumblings up there about sea bass or halibut or squid? I, I, I don't even think anybody's been out, have they? No, no one's been out. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel our trips last weekend because of the weather. Uh, weather does look nice for this weekend, though. If you um, if you don't mind a little bit of rain, the, the weather does look pretty nice. Um so you guys can come join us this weekend, and we'll spend some time looking. We did have good fishing and saw saw some good sign on uh, the prior weekend. We uh, had good halibut fishing, caught a sea bass as well. Things were looking good and lively, so uh, hoping to get back and see kind of more of the same there. All right, very good. There you go, Anthony. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vanta Rally. Hello, Friedman. Do you like... Is that frying things? Is that what that says? I think so, yes. Also, good afternoon, guys. I love frying things. Like, <laughs> uh, all kinds of things, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like frying things, Daniel? 
Yeah, yeah, I don't mind it. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, hey, well, I mean, if you're talking about fish tacos or something like that, there's nothing better on the face of this earth. I know I'm not supposed to eat it because I'm on carnivore now. I've been carnivore here for a while, so all that okay. breading, all that carb stuff, it's yeah. not uh, something, but man, when I'm in Mexico sometimes and I walk by a fish taco stand, I can't resist. And that fish that you guys catch up there is just tailor-made for a fish taco, Daniel. Oh, absolutely. It's that like perfect light meat that you're looking for, uh, especially that rockfish. Nothing like some uh, cod tacos. All right, Carlos Sanchez. Hey, Carlos, it is so good to see you here. What's up, fellas? Are you guys targeting halibut? and rockfish so he's joined us a little bit late maybe you could reiterate yeah absolutely so uh this weekend guys for saturday and sunday uh we can't fish rockfish yet but we'll be targeting whitefish sheephead sculpin for the first part of the day and then we'll be fishing halibut and sea bass after that but uh starting monday and uh going forward for a good while we're going to be fishing rockfish primarily for the first part of our day and then spending some time on uh, halibut and sea bass after that. So, yeah, um, rockfish and halibut should be on the menu for Monday. All right, Q-Ball is with us. Hey, Q, good to see you here. You know, Daniel, when I talk about the weather, sometimes I get myself into trouble because I, um, I honestly rarely look at whether it's going to rain or not. I'm more, I'm just concerned about wind. That's Me what too. I'm looking at. And yeah. I, when I tell people, I said, I don't even know, you know, I don't know if it's going to rain or not. What do I care? If you get a little bit wet, what, wear some, you know, some wet gear. Don't be worried yeah. about that. But it's Get a rain wind. jacket. You know, the, the fish certainly don't mind. They're already wet. It's all, <laughs> it's all good. Just bring your uh, bring your wet gear and it'll be all right. All right. So it may rain a little bit, but you've looked at the wind for this weekend and it sounds like it's going to be nice. Yeah, I've looked at the wind report and it, it really looks pretty good. Um, certainly nothing to... Um, ruin a day or anything like that. Looks like a very, very good weather day as far as wind goes. All right. Tuna Kid is with us, and it's good to see you here. Hey, guys, always great to hear a fresh report from out there. And, man, Daniel does it better than anybody. That was me saying that, and I'm sure Tuna Kid <laughs> agrees. What's up? Uh, what do you guys think about maybe having salmon up that way this year? Is that – uh? season open is that possible um to be honest with you we don't really see salmon um over here where we fish that's a bit farther north uh i don't i don't know anything about the salmon season i'm not gonna lie to you um that makes two of us yeah salmon is is uh, more of a northern california deal and uh i don't even think that it's the season for salmon right now i'm pretty sure it's later in the year Although I am old enough to remember catching salmon out of Newport Beach, Redondo <laughs> Beach, and up in your neck of the woods, but that was back in prehistoric times, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, you'll see uh, like one boat maybe every couple years will catch a salmon out here, but uh, it's definitely not a not a common thing. Carlos Sanchez sends all his thanks for the great answers that you've been giving, as do I, Daniels. Back to the rockfish opener. So starting when that rockfish opener starts, of course, at some point, right now, the rockfish opener, I mean, everybody wants to catch rockfish and everything else, but you've already mentioned. Oh, now Phil's gone. Uh-oh. Am I oh, back? You're back. <laughs> As the season goes on, you start to catch barracuda, you start to catch calico bass, you start to catch halibut. Man, those kind of combo trips are so freaking awesome. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we never really want to decide what we're going to fish before we kind of, you know, get out there. Obviously, it's different for the rockfish opener. We haven't been able to fish at it all this year, so we're going to you know, dive in and get started on that. But as the year goes on, we're, we're just kind of going to be doing freelance trips. You know, we're just going to kind of get out there and see what the, what's the best chance for, you know, catching fish and having a fun day, you know, at that particular time and go from there. We're not going to really um, make plans too far in advance on like what kind of fishing we're going to be doing. So and there's a lot, lot to do up here, a lot to offer. We're going to kind of just, um, Pay attention, see how things are shaking out, and just look to give you guys the best uh, 
fishing available on that day. And before we take off, this is the fastest half hour on YouTube. Let me tell you, I just looked up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking for five minutes here, man. What's yeah. going on here? Um, you got your crew guys. They will tie everybody up. They will recheck it, make sure everything's right. They'll yeah. check your drag. You got all that going on. Absolutely. All right, Daniel, <clears throat> anything else we need to uh, talk about? We've got trips this weekend. we got the Rockfish opener on April 1st. I'll be there shooting photos and video and harassing you and the crew. <laughs> anything else we need to talk about? I think that pretty much covers it. But, yeah, guys, if you want to come out fishing, give the landing a call, 805-676-3474. Uh, you can talk to Sal there in the landing, or you can visit us online at VenturaSportFishing.com. And like Phil said, he's going to be here on Monday for the Rockfish opener. Uh, I'm super excited for that trip. So if you'd like to come uh, open up the Rockfish season with us, uh, give the landing a call. And I hope to see you guys all on Monday. Daniel, always a pleasure, man. Really great job again. It's always good to see you. And I'll see you on Monday for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, Phil. I'll see you soon. Take care, Daniel. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye. Just a reminder, everybody, you can help support the Freeman Adventures YouTube channel by buying some merch, like a hat or a shirt. You can do that by going to embroiderycreations.net. Really appreciate all you do for the Freeman Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks, everybody.